I'd like to ask you a question. If you work in a factory environment, how well does your equipment run? Are miners stops and starts normal? Do you have high setup times, long changeover times, high scrap rates? If so, this video will be of interest to you because I want to tell you about total productive maintenance. I've been uh, part of TPM programs and if you're still using the old traditional approach, there's a lot of money on the table and you're experiencing a lot more frustration tied to equipment than you really need to be. Hi, Brian McCordy here with Black Belt Lean Thinking. And there's been a lot of evolution when it comes to maintenance. Uh, if you go back prior to the 1940s, really breakdown maintenance was the main thing that you saw. We ran the equipment until it broke down, then we got it back up and running again. Then in the 1940s, preventive maintenance came along and we started trying to take care of the equipment in advance, oil change, things of this nature, you know, trying to prevent it from breaking down. Then in the 60s and 70s in Japan, TPM was really developed and then spread across the world. And it is the best maintenance program that's out there today. For one thing, there are specific goals with TPM along the line of making people more knowledgeable, the, the people that run the equipment, that have the greatest impact on the equipment, making them more uh, knowledgeable and more mechanical in terms of understanding the needs and how to care for the equipment. There are goals set up in terms of metrics, OEE, if you've heard of overall equipment effectiveness, that's the report card for how well your uh, equipment is running. It measures it by three characteristics and six major losses. Once mechanics and those that operate the equipment know this score, then they know where to focus their efforts. Other goals is it takes care of that conflicting mentality that often happens between the maintenance crew and those that are the machine operators. Uh, often there's a little bit of conflict between the two of them. So let's, um, let's look at the benefits. As a matter of fact, this video is going to be really benefits focused. Uh, we are benefit oriented. Again, our favorite radio station is WIFN. What's in it for me? We rarely pursue anything that we don't see the benefit for. So my goal in this video is to really show you what TPM has to offer. That if there's uh, enough response, I'll go ahead and make a tutorial video down the road on uh, how to put together a total productive maintenance system. But let's look at a little bit of the nuts and bolts and kind of the 30,000 foot view on what it really has to offer. Grab a marker here. Let's say we have a piece of equipment. So we've got a crate here, not the best of crates, and we take our piece of equipment out and put it to work on the floor. So here's our equipment, and let's see. And it's a happy piece of equipment. So we put it to use. Now, once you uncrate a piece of equipment, especially in a factory floor environment, which tends to be somewhat harsh. Most of the factories that you go into, they've got uh, usually excesses when it comes to climate control. In terms of you might have uh, a lot of heat, a lot of cold, maybe high humidity or dry, very dirty environments where contamination is somewhat normal. Okay, what happens when we put that equipment into use is slowly with time deterioration takes place. And this is just normal deterioration, even when the machinery is cared for. But in a normal work environment, you're going to have things like that harsh factory environment where there's maybe contamination. If, if people don't understand how to care for the equipment properly, then you can accelerate this and it happens faster. And typically that's what I see. Again, due to lack of knowledge with the people that are running it, there's a lot of improper lubrication or lack of lubrication, contamination, maybe uh, poor quality raw materials are placed into it, causes excessive wear, but it just uh, accelerates quickly and our machine really tends to suffer for it. The idea of TPM is to really eliminate this aspect 
and improve the life cycle of the equipment. I, I mentioned to you before that, again, there are goals tied with TPM, and there's a framework you can follow that really does goes a long way to helping you to capture opportunities when it comes to uh, maintenance with your equipment. So again, we want to change that and slow down that deterioration and increase the lifespan of the equipment as long as possible. And some of those goals that go along with TPM are not only increase the life cycle, but actually improve the equipment through Kaizen. You know, those that do the work on a regular basis will often see opportunities to make improvements on the equipment. We want to capture those. Okay, so let's look at a basic traditional maintenance program and then look at what a TPM program would be like. So let's get rid of this. I suppose I could do better than my hand. And having the right tool for the job, much better. Okay, so a traditional approach is usually something along this line. We've got our maintenance team. These are the brave men that provide maintenance in the factory. So you might have you know, a maintenance team of you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 people. Let's say we got a good size factory and we have 20 people here that are good, solid, trained maintenance people. So let's look at the factory now. Let's say that we have in the factory five production lines. One more. No, that's five. Let's see if I can count today. And we'll call these production lines one through five. Okay, now let's say for each of these production lines we have different shifts. We'll say that we have four shifts for each of them. And one of the large factories that I was, uh, where my office actually was, and where I did the training, that's what we had. We actually had about five, we had five shifts. So this is not uncommon. If you've got a 24-hour factory, you're going to have several shifts. So here's our shifts. And again, they'll, we'll number them, no, number all of them, but one through four. So we got four shifts going. So we got five production lines, four shifts for each one. And usually there are some departments that create like sub-assemblies, painting or components that are needed for the main lines. So let's have two departments, we'll say. So department one and two. And we'll say for the departments, they each have two shifts. Now, if your maintenance team, those 20 individuals, are providing maintenance support for all this factory, do you see a problem kind of developing where they're spread a little bit thin here? So if the focus is for them to reach out and take care of all these, they're going to be spread awfully thin. And typically, again, in the, with the traditional approach to maintenance at a factory, and this is typically what I see, here's what you have. You have the people that run the equipment, so you have the operators that are running the equipment, and it breaks down, so they get on the phone, they call a maintenance person. One of these fine gentlemen or ladies come out and start working on the equipment, the operator grabs a broom or goes and helps somebody else. Once the equipment is fixed and ready to run again, they come back, take over, and the maintenance person goes back to, you know, wherever maintenance, maintenance people go during the day. And again, usually there's a bit of a conflict here. The maintenance person sees the operators, that person that doesn't take care of the equipment. They're the ones that are always causing it to break down, so they have to come out and work on it. The operator often sees a maintenance person as a person that's not taking care of the equipment. If they did their job properly and the equipment was running the way it should, they wouldn't have to come out and keep working on it and it wouldn't keep breaking down on them. So again, there are dilemmas created between the two and a little bit of friction. With TPM, all that goes away. Here's what you see with a TPM program. Instead of the momentum going out from maintenance where they're the ones driving it, it is the other direction. So let's remove our arrows kind of all together. And now the momentum is really from the lines. They take over maintenance from the standpoint of they are now the melody and these people are the harmony. Before, in a traditional approach, they'd be the melody, they'd be the ones that are kind of getting all the program going. Now it's the opposite. These people are the ones truly responsible for the equipment. Now, 
again, they take on a support capacity to the point that really to a degree they're the nucleus still, they're the experts, they're the ones that are showing them what to do, giving them the framework, but these people are taking on a much greater role and responsibility in terms of that equipment and they're taking ownership of it. Some of the framework that I mentioned earlier would be say daily chat sheets. So when one of these operators takes over the piece of equipment, the first thing they're going to do at the start of their shift is they're going to walk around the equipment for about five minutes and like a pilot with their plane do a pre-flight checklist. They're going to check oil reservoirs you know, making sure that uh, oil levels are marked and that they're full the way they should be, that there's no contamination. Air pressure gauges should be marked and running properly. They'll check maybe high wear parts. These checklists that they follow at the start of a ship, part of their TPM, should only take about five minutes to require no tools. But this will help them to be able to catch problems much sooner. And again, it starts out that ownership. Again, as that goes, we want to provide training for them, which again, they'll provide, where they become more knowledgeable on the equipment, where they can handle minor breakdowns and things that aren't real labor intense, they can take care of. We want to slowly give them more and more responsibility in terms of maintenance. And then, like I said, these people take on more of a support capacity than being the drivers of it. Again, when this happens, that uh, conflict goes away. They start working together and you've got more of a teamwork environment with everyone. Again, those goals that I mentioned before, remember the first one is we want people more knowledgeable on the equipment. Then if the people that are spending the most time with the equipment really don't understand it and aren't trained on how to care for it, then that, that accelerated deterioration is, is most likely going to happen. We want that ownership, we want them trained to take care of it. The second goal is we want them to understand be measuring OEE so they can see where they need to focus their efforts. Is it, are they getting a lot of minor shutdowns? Are they getting jam ups? What's causing problems? And we want them to be able to focus on improving those. Okay, so that OEE scorecard is really important. We want to improve the life of the equipment. Okay, this is another goal, improving the equipment through Kaizen when these people have ideas on how to improve like guards, ergonomics, things of this nature, working with engineering and with the maintenance group, we want them to be able to facilitate improvements. So I know in the factory that I worked, it was about 500 people. Um, we had this type of a setup where we had a strong maintenance team and we had a good shop. You know, once these people came up with a Kaizen, say for a different type guard, it would help them to be able to access lubrication points faster and easier. You know, if it was okay with the maintenance team and the team on the line, the others that ran the equipment, then they were quick to do it and it was a win-win for everybody. Now, if you're implementing a TPM program in a traditional factory that is used to the old traditional approach, these people might kind of bulk at first about taking on more responsibility and learning more about the equipment. But some of what you can tell them is the payoff in terms of frustration is so great being able to make improvements to it, to get that ownership. Um, usually within a year or two, they'll do 180 degrees as they, you know, most of them won't want to go back to that traditional approach. The factor that I was in, again, if a lot of piece of equipment broke down and they called maintenance to come help a maintenance and go, you know, what do you need me for? You can do it yourself. They would provide support if it was something really serious, you know, a gearbox or something bigger that needs change. But also, the, if it put down the line, the other mechanics kind of would swarm in like bees to help get it back up and running too. So it really helped with the aspect of teamwork. Okay, so hopefully I have pricked your interest in showing what TPM has to offer versus the older forms of maintenance, like breakdown maintenance or just preventive maintenance. TPM uses a, a teamwork approach making the people that run the equipment the true owners of the equipment and training them to be more equipment knowledgeable. We're slowing down that natural deterioration that happens with equipment and increasing its life cycle and hopefully even improving the equipment itself. If you would like more information on this, again, um, go to Black Belt Lean Thinking, use my comments section, and I'll gladly answer questions. Again, I'm always glad to talk about lean. Uh, a good article that explains in a little bit more detail some of what I just explained to you, you can find on Nectar Data, and I'll put a link to it down here. Nectar Data is a, a company that uh, 
really does good with providing mobile applications and when it comes to tracking information like highway parts and how often something's changed out really we need good tracking and, and mobile might be a good answer for you to help kind of handle all the heavy lifting when it comes with collecting data changing it information then being able to use it so once again hopefully this helped you be sure and share and hit like and until next time brian recorder black belt lean thinking thank you